Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for tuning in. You must have known I'm going to talk about something that is affecting you or a loved one today. A couple of doctors here. Dr. Lynn Lopez is a chiropractor. He's written a new book, uh, Five Steps a Day. Toward the end of the show, you'll learn more about that. Then my friend Carrie O'Reilly. Dr. O'Reilly is a dentist, a holistic dentist in San Diego. He's talking about things that are important. Lemon in the morning, what are dental fillings made of, things that are very, very important to us. I open today talking about how many tissues in the human body can become impregnated with fungus where they deposit their mycotoxins and make us terribly sick. All that and a whole lot more. That's why you joined me today on Know the Cause. For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate, and you know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now welcome to Know the Cause. Many years ago, I brought you an article that said, uh, why are people polysymptomatic? We were a skin doctor. I worked with a group of skin doctors here in Dallas. They brought me from Los Angeles many years ago. And I'd help them with psoriasis or other skin problems. And they'd tell me, Doug, while I was on your diet and taking the supplements, I noticed that my stomach problems cleared up or I noticed my headaches went away. Folks, sometimes polysymptomatic patients, according to this article, do well on a drug called Nystatin. All it does is kill fungus, okay? Keep that in mind as we introduce this segment. As systemic fungal infections worsen, what should we expect? Okay, this disseminated fungal diseases uh, usually indicate a breach in host defenses. Don't worry, I'm gonna explain this to you. Such a breach may be caused by endocrinopathies, immune disorders, or it can be induced iatrogenically. Effective management of the fungal infection requires concerted effort to uncover and correct the underlying uh, defects. Okay, so I put that into English for you because this is relevant. Local fungal infections, a little ringworm, things like that. Systemic fungal infections, those affecting the lungs, the kidneys, the liver, um, are quite another animal and, and they're really difficult to, to treat. In layman's English, that headline or that article said this, once inside the body, fungi metastasize via the bloodstream, and it usually affects a person with a compromised immune system. As it moves through the body, disorders of the endocrine or immune systems may propel it or accelerate it. Wow. Certain medicines, medicinal procedures, these are called iatrogenic, can also cause fungus to metastasize. In order to effectively treat the fungal infection, you must strive to isolate and fix these problems. In other words, you must know the cause. The cause is rarely looked at, I'm, I'm sorry, in medicine. Um, what we do very effectively in the U.S is hush symptoms for four to six hours at a time for a price. Uh, this leads you back to the doctor's office often so he can test you to see if the medicines are working and if they aren't then there's another medicine. I'm, I'm a guy who when I got back from Vietnam in 1971 and I had all these health problems, I wanted to know the cause. Is it post-traumatic stress? Did I see things a 20 year old kid wasn't supposed to see? Is it that I'm now 21 living in Los Angeles and I can drink alcohol and I can eat anything? My mom doesn't set the table. I'm living with my roommates now, okay? Did that factor into my health problems? Yes, it did. I'll cut to the chase. So let's study this. Certain fungi make poisons inside the human body. We call these mycotoxins. They gain access to the bloodstream and then they're pumped indiscriminately by the heart. This carries them to other tissues and organs. Although I've uh, never been able to prove this, I actually believe that these mycotoxins tend to gravitate to our weakest tissues or organs. While some set up shop in those tissues, others continue to circulate by the bloodstream, wrecking havoc on seemingly healthy tissues. Okay, and then I wanna delve into this because I pulled head, uh, headlines from research for the past few years and I wanna show you some of them. Long ago, I began to wonder what happened to all the people who have systemic fungal disorders. And medical headlines began to teach me what happened to them. Here is what I learned. Fungus moves throughout the body until a doctor accurately diagnoses it. It can mimic many 
many conditions. Okay, you ready? These are some old, some of them are 15 years old, but I want you to see the link here. Depression may promote atherosclerosis or blood vessel plaque. This is in 2007. Diabetes, heart disease can herald early GI cancers. Patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease have an increased risk of heart disease. Alcoholism and pneumonia linked. Birth defects linked to greater risk of cancer later in life. Let me keep going. Diabetes and cancer and alpha connection. Diabetes linked to back pain. Direct link between high cholesterol and prostate cancer found. MIT researchers uh, link cancer and inflammatory diseases, DNA methylation levels linked to obesity, and this list could be endless. In other words, if you go to a doctor for obesity and the root cause isn't identified, then that fungus will just disseminate to a different area in your body. And before you know it, diabetes. Gee, John, I'm noticing your blood sugar level is way up. Yeah, I haven't been feeling good. And before you know it, what's that growth on your neck? I'm telling you folks, we need in medicine to begin to spend time looking at the whole patient. When did this problem begin? Were you exposed to mold? Instead of treating symptoms four to six hours at a time, because they can go on and cause serious health problems. Hey folks, did your dentist get up this morning and work out in his garage or jog a couple of miles? Did he then go in and get a handful of vitamin C and all these great immune stimulating uh, nutrients? Does he practice what he preaches? Joining us right now is a man you've met, Dr. Kerry O'Reilly. Uh, many of you have. You're a brand new viewer. You're going to love this. We're going to talk about dental materials with Dr. Kerry O'Reilly. He's out in San Diego. He's a holistic dentist, different than a lot of other dentists. Dr. O'Reilly, thank you. And teach us a little bit about uh, what you use when someone has a cavitation or a little cavity in their teeth that might be different from the majority of dentists. Mm, thank you, Doug. You bet. Yeah, the materials I use don't contain metal, first of all. So a lot of people have metal fillings or metal crowns. Um, what I do is I replace those as they need to be replaced with porcelain or composite. Now, composite is a, a white filling material that, that's made up of resin and porcelain. So a lot of porcelains are used in dentistry these days. And they, they are, they're more bio-friendly in general. They look better, of course, because they're white and natural. Mm -hmm. And they can be bonded to the teeth. So they're very strong these days versus 10 years ago where a lot of that them broke, for instance, or cracked. So a lot is possible today that wasn't possible even 10 years ago. I remember uh, reading a year or two ago in one of my uh, nutritional journals, we're really questioning, folks, some of these uh, metals that are put in mouths now. So thank God for a dentist like Dr. O'Reilly, and there are many now, who are saying, no, composites seem to work well, and so forth, porcelain, like he's talking about. You live, it's funny, you you spell holistic with an H, myholisticdentist.com. You can go there and get educated. You live a pretty much, as much as possible, chemical-free life, don't you, from the food and supplements to, yeah. to your practice. Teach us about uh, building up a lot of chemicals in our body and the need for sweating, detoxifying, using vitamins, et cetera. Mm. Exercise is so important on a daily basis. You need to be consistent in your habits, basically. So, so uh, exercise, exercise is a great habit. Mm -hmm. And I get up in the morning and walk. Every morning, the first thing I do, I have my little walking sticks, go up and down hills. Um, you got to get your blood moving in order to get your metabolism moving in the morning. And before you even eat, um, I drink water in the morning with lemon or lime. I don't eat protein at first. I eat like an apple and celery, and my day continues from there. It's, it's really all about energy and how you feel. If you feel balanced and you support and, and you eat well, you know, no one can eat perfectly, but as much organic food as you can, non-processed, it has to be. All these habits are important for our longevity. It's a, it's a picture of energy and longevity that I th think health 
uh, to maintain your health, health in that in that way. And we did a segment one time with Dr. O'Reilly where we talked about the immune system. Folks, it's interesting to me that very often a dentist will see degeneration before a pediatrician does. Mommy takes the child to a, a dentist. He opens his mouth and he says, wow, mom, we need to talk. Your child's very acid. Let's get him more alkaline. Dr. O'Reilly is a dentist like that who really is concerned about your immune system. He's an educator, too. You don't have to go to San Diego to see him. Go to myholisticdentist.com. Holistic with an H. Dr. O'Reilly, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Doug. You bet. Now for something really serious, folks, Silva asks on Facebook, for over a decade, I've had episodes with vomiting and headaches. The retching alone might induce the headaches, but I want you to know something. Certain fungi cause disease in man. You know what one of the mycotoxins made by the fungus is called? Vomitoxin. Vomitoxin can be in our grain supply folks. And so do you eat cereal, donuts, you know, pasta, things of that sort, breads? Could there be a mycotoxin called vomitoxin? It's also called deoxynevalenol, D-O-N, if your doctor wants to know. Maybe. If I were you, I'd go to a doctor and say, let me try Spornox, the toenail fungus drug, which is now working for cancer patients, and Nystatin, and I'm going to follow Kaufman's number one diet. I'm going to try and starve whatever is making me vomit, if in fact it's fungus, and I want to take an antifungal drug that will get into my brain and throughout my body. Diflucan or Spornox, Nystatin, and the Kaufman One Diet. You're gonna know in a week or two if we're on the right track. Is this a fungus? You and your doctor will know. Oh boy, the Fungus Link Trilogy, right? Three books that were written in the late 1990s all the way up to 2005, and why were they written? I want to teach you a little bit here. It's kind of a fun story. In the late 1990s, David Holland and I worked together for several years. With his credentials as a physician and a postgraduate degree in microbiology, he knew about fungal infections. Many needed antifungal medications, but he would refer his patients that he believed would benefit from a diet change and supplements to me. We publish our findings in 2000 in a groundbreaking book called The Fungus Link. And folks, the, the story is amazing. We really thought, you know, these eight or nine things, this is the third or fourth printing of The Fungus Link One book, it continues to sell and sell and sell. We really thought that those seven or eight things were linked to fungus. Th that was the year 1999, 2000. Then all of a sudden, we continued, he continued seeing patients, okay? And we learned. We thought the fungus link covered most of the illnesses that fungus cause. Never did we expect that two more volumes would be needed uh, to be published based on the many symptoms and diseases that we saw clinically. The fungus link became the fungus link, volume one. In this book, we listed fungal infections and their link to allergies, arthritis, digestive or tummy problems, respiratory problems, mental health problems, heart problems, women's health problems and the pain. I mean, just in this one book, and we kind of capped it. Okay, good, we got the book out. The public was demanding more and more, and as we began to see more and more symptoms respond favorably to an antifungal diet and so forth, enter this. Three years and many of his patients later, the Fungus Link Volume 2 was published after we discovered how widespread fungal problems really were. We discovered that some people with hormone problems, mental dysfunction, ear, nose, and throat problems, eye diseases, problems linked to childhood health, men's health problems, cancer conditions, autoimmune diseases, weight problems, and hair and skin problems also improved while following an antifungal protocol. So what is this antifungal protocol? I've gone over it here on television for decades now, 22 years, to kill or neutralize a virus is one thing. To kill or neutralize bacteria is another. Yet to kill fungus is much different. It eats once it's inside our body. It demands you eat more sugar. So if you're craving sugar, that's why. When I say sugar, I mean carbs, like pasta, breads, cake, pastries, you know, uh, cereals, and so forth. 
that's what it eats. So you won't even know it. You'll begin to expand your waistline. You'll think, what has gone wrong with me? I can't get enough pasta. That's fungus uh, making the decision for you. So we didn't, and you need to kill it. Not only starve it, then you need to kill it. Will big drugs do that? Will some supplements do that? Uh, that's something we need to find out. As you might imagine, with two books linking fungus to human symptoms and disease and millions of people being told that doctors remain confused about why they're sick, we began having new people come into the office wondering if their illness might involve fungus. The testimonials we heard prompted the Fungus Link Volume 3, which covered skin cancer, eczema, postpartum depression, sick building syndrome, infertility, uh, weakened immunity, bladder diseases, kidney stones, weight problems, and inflammation. And I've got to tell you folks something, in the 50 years I've been involved in this, it doesn't stop there. Dr. A.B. Costantini with the World Health Organization in the 1980s and 90s just published so many health problems are linked to fungus. And yet our physicians are being taught everything's got to be bacteria. Uh, if that were true, folks, we would have no illness. We've all been on antibiotics, right? Our most common questions were this. What diet would you recommend to starve yeast or fungus? Can you give me some recipes? What antifungal meds can I ask my doctor for? Are there natural supplements, nutritional supplements, that have antifungal property? How do I know if my problems might be linked to fungus? I mean, good question. We heard this you know, all the time, every day, and here's the answer. Literally every one of these questions and more are covered in each of the three books I am sitting next to or standing next to. To review the symptoms and diseases covered in each of these books, simply go to our bookstore at knowthecause.com. We had no idea then how popular this trilogy of books would become. We're in probably our 10th or 11th printing. We keep printing and printing and printing because you folks want to know, uh, is my health condition linked to fungus? The proper diet and the proper supplements or meds will have that question answered quite quickly. Friends, my guest, who you saw peripherally there, has been a friend of mine for decades. Uh, Dr. Lynn Lopez uh, joins us right now. Lynn is, or was, a local chiropractor. But way beyond that, he got busy. His practice just went crazy. He worked with athletes, you know, Olympic-style athletes. And uh, then one day, he really got into his own health, his own fitness. Len, welcome to the show. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining being us. here. I want to talk about Five Steps a Day, your newest work, right. which is very, very good. But first, what prompted you to take such amazing... Oh, you remember you were a dancer. You sweat. <laughs> you were a boxer. I remember. And uh, what prompted you to get healthy? You know, I, I don't know. I just always grew up that way. My, you know, as a kid, one of three boys, there was always athletics in our life and everything. My father was just really, so we, we were just always competitive with each other, but it wasn't until I got into in high school and I didn't want to have the sand kicked in my face and everything because I was smaller than my other brother, older brother. And so that got me into exercise and, and started, you know, the, the bodybuilding per se. But then I started just reading more about the health aspect of what you get from, uh, you know, what you eat in your body. Because, you know, 80% of, of your results are not just from, or 80% of your results really come from your diet and recovery, yeah. not so much from the, your actual workout itself. And so I go, it's like, you, you, you know, what, what's your return on investment? Hey, let me diet better than working out. Don't, don't work so hard working out because you're only going to get maybe 25% return on that. Yeah. Hey, the diet is a bigger thing. And so I started really reading more, studying more, you know, how the body absorbs, what are you trying to absorb, how there's chaos in the tummy, and that needs to be remedied a lot also. Mm. Was there a family member or a mom, dad that were really into this? Well, we were talking about this earlier, you know, when I was younger, my, uh, natural medicine has always been a part, yeah. right? And that's yeah. what we do. And, and, I, and I met a guy on a plane one time years ago before I really got into this field, and he was just telling me all about natural, he was a journalist. Uh -huh. And he was just talking about how there's natural ways of approaching some of the things that we traditional medicine goes at. And it got me started scratching my head, and I remember 
my aunt when I was a kid, uh, other members of the family and friends coming over to her house and everything, and she would do just some of the various herbs and stuff like that wow. for them, and some of the stuff that me and my brother would laugh about that day, we would see the, <laughs> now, do our younger brother. <laughs> now you're eating it, right? Yeah, yeah, and so it's like, wow, maybe there is something to do with, and so that really moved me to start thinking about the, the whole natural medicine approach. All of this led to some inventions. You have some right. patents on equipment. But five steps a day, take the next couple of minutes and expound on this great book. Well, well thank you. It, five Steps a Day is just it's an accountability book to track your habits and attitude. And it's based on you know, how you feed your body, how you feed your mind, how you feed your spirit. And again, I'm not trying to be Jim Rome or Zig Ziglar, not a lot of those, those motivational speakers out there, but, but what I've, the, the twist I've added was that the word STEPS is an acronym for sleep, think, eat, physical and spirit and so you know take for example uh, eat uh, and we all know hey did you eat good for today if you did shade in the footstep for the e part did you get some physical activity today if you did shade in the p and so by the end of the week you know did you work your spiritual muscles let me shade in that s out there and by the end of the week you can see you've taken maybe 20 30 steps forward progressing to try to build to try to build yourself up to, you know, to make you happier, more content and everything. And so it's just an accountability program to really see, are you doing what you need to be? Are you feeding your body? Are you feeding your mind? Are you feeding your spirit? And it's just an, a, a really good accountability program to help you in that journey. You told me, and knowing you as a, as a kind of engineering scientist, you've always charted. Yep. You know, you've always charted progress. One of the reasons I love this book is because of all these, you know, little steps here that you fill in people you can go back gee I wish it was February again because I felt so good in February I wonder what I did in February oh my gosh I was exercising I was getting the pee I was eating well I was thinking well all these are shaded in I want to go right. back and be that way right right yeah it's just wow. a real simple tool to help you just keep track what do they say on Shark Tank you have to know your numbers so many people wonder why they may be struggling in a certain area. Maybe you're not doing as good of, some of your habits need to be improved on, and that's all it is, just a way to track your habits and attitudes. Five Steps a Day, a great book, Dr. Len Lopez, drlenlopez.com. It's where you can get it and all his other products. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Thank you, Doug. It's been a pleasure to be here. You know, I became acquainted with fungus as the etiology, the cause of so many health problems when I had them when I got back in Vietnam. The year was 1971. In 1972, Dr. Elizabeth Moore Landacker wrote a book called Fundamentals of the Fungi, where they can grow, how they can make your life miserable. There have been a dozen, a couple dozen books written since, like the book I referenced today. This stuff can grow anywhere in your body. Complicated then, sometimes with mercury, which is neurotoxic in dental amalgam. Thank you, Dr. Kerry O'Reilly, for joining us today and educating us on what uh, you know the proper properties are to put back in your mouth. And then lack of exercise, not being organized, like Dr. Len Lopez said. Folks, thank you so much for making Know the Cause a part of your life. We love you for it. God bless. Bye-bye.